Hello. <laughs> Musical this time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah Episode yeah. 25. Of, 25? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of damn episodes. Of it's Alex of and Jim episodes. Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. 25 yeah. of them. 25 of them. There's... And there, that's more than 25 hours, by the way, because most yeah. episodes that we do are a, are a buck 10 or something. Yeah, because uh, I fuck around and tell stories. Yeah, exactly. Stories don't spend time on task. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it was uh, when I taught in high school, that was one of the uh, big catchphrases they gave you when you were learning to be a teacher. It's like you wanted to emphasize time on task. So whatever you do, have lots of time on task in your classroom. Yeah. And then you get to a classroom and it's you're like, oh, this isn't possible. <laughs> <laughs> I I want to get out of here alive is my new goal. Right. Uh, you hated teaching, right? I didn't hate actual teaching, which is a tiny percentage of what you do. That part I liked, where a student was actually looking at you and hearing you, and you would teach them a thing, and they would go, oh, cool, okay, so it's this. And you go, yes, it is that. That was great. <laughs> but the rest was, sit down. You have to sit down. Why aren't you sitting down? <laughs> Stop, no, don't go over there, sit down. And uh, for years. And nobody ever sat down. Were you teaching high school? I taught high school in Yuma, Arizona for one year. Okay. I had English and drama in a brand new high school that had just been built two years before. Okay. They didn't even have seniors yet. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, sit down, come <laughs> back. Come back was a big one. <laughs> Where are you going? I remember it. I remember in my high school, everything seemed perfectly fine. It seemed like it wasn't that hard of a job. It seemed like it was easy, but of course, I was just a dumb kid, and what did I know? And then one day, a math teacher got in a fight with a student, and now the student started it. Just to be clear, it wasn't a math teacher. It was like, <laughs> all right, and and we're like, and I thought, Jesus, how? How does this happen? And then you realize, oh, it's just people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a giant. Just people who uh, have no authority to enforce anything they tell you. Yeah. And then uh, the kid will figure that out pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. And be like, you can't hit me. You can't find me or jail me. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to leave. Yeah, you can give me a bad grade, but I've decided I don't care about that. Right. And there is a consequence for the kid, but he doesn't know that. It's 10 years away, that consequence. Right. Yeah. And then, like, he wakes up 30 years old and he's like, oh, I'm stupid. Oh. Shoot. <laughs> How did that happen? Oh, because when I wouldn't sit down, oh, that's what happened. Sit down. Now I'm stupid and I don't have any money. Yep. And now I do have to listen to someone way dumber for the money I do have. Right. And I have to work outdoors, yeah. <laughs> most likely, or in the back of a building <laughs> instead of the front. Yeah, that's right. That's what you get your degree in is to be able to be in the front. Yeah. yeah. Um, so welcome to Alex and Jim <laughs> Analyze. Uh, society <laughs> right right yeah <laughs> well that actually is yeah. too true we do analyze a very small part of society the billy joel part yeah a very narrow niche <laughs> so uh uh the song i picked today uh i picked because that means tom has to watch another episode uh is from the album uh an innocent man and it's careless talk is that your favorite album? No. Because you have picked a number of songs from that album now. No, no, it isn't. In fact, um, 
it's low on my list. I really like glass houses. Yeah, yeah. I like 42nd Street. I like, uh, and it's fine. And Innocent Man is fine. There's definitely songs I like on it, but um, I, it, gosh, it, I don't know. It just, it, it feels like a very surface album to me. Like, I don't think there's actually a lot going on. Whereas some of the, your, some of your favorite songs that we've talked about have to do with Billy Joel addressing uh, societal issues he cares about, you know, a fisherman's plight and, you know, <laughs> True. Yeah. and that kind of stuff where, or just in general, being mad about the way corporations work and stuff. And, and, but this one is just, uh, an innocent man is just he liked the fifties, thought they were neat. <laughs> right. And and he liked with, those kind of songs. Yeah. And that's okay too. Like there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. I, I don't hate the album. I, I like it enough. Um, uh, but I think I've mentioned this like for the longest time, I don't think I like that song very much. Right. Because of him singing all the parts. Yeah. And you don't get the texture you should get. Yeah. I'm just going to pause us for a second and say, you said 42nd Street, you meant 52nd Street. Uh, yes. And I'm just uh, pointing that out because anyone listening is like, aren't, isn't, aren't they going to say the correct name of that? So, <laughs> Thank so you. That they, uh, won't be distracted. <laughs> right. That's good. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Um, yeah. I like uh, straw houses. Big fan of straw houses. Oh, no. <laughs> Leave meeting. Um, I will say An Innocent Man, that al the whole album, I think is some of his best singing. It is a really good singing. Um, not his best thing. Um, but I think uh, if you're going to sing in that style, a, the, a lot of the style of the 50s, and especially Frankie Valli, which is what he's trying to do for most of the album. Yeah. Uh, a voice that was clear as a bell and beautiful and very on key. And so I think he's like stepped up his tea and honey game yeah, <laughs> to get in shape. And I also think he might have been at an age where he was like, I'm not going to be able to hit these notes in five years. Or in some cases now. Yeah. Uh, so I might as well make this 50s album before I can't. True. Before and then it sounds like Lou Reed. And then, yeah, and the more I think about it too, the one thing I would, to give the album credit for something, it is at least, it is neat that the album is absolutely thematically consistent. He really did dive into oh. the idea. He didn't half-ass it and do two or three songs that were kind of 50s. It's, it really is era correct. It really as is. As far as a goal to have. And, and at that point, how many albums do you think he had put out at that point? Yeah, eight or nine. Eight or nine, yeah. So at that point, you really are digging in deep to find something to talk about. Right. Yes, and then I think when you do like, I'm going to do a genre, then it just automatically scares up the kind of material you're going to, like if you're going to do a 50s album, then, well, you're going to be talking about uh, girls yeah. and how you like them and how you might get close to one of them. Yeah. Or one of them might have broken your heart yeah and or other manifestation and i think also he had just married christy brinkley or was about to right and so i think he was in that mindset he Did felt he... like a young man again is there a car song on there there's not is there maybe that's the only trick he didn't do i don't think he's a car guy yeah I think he had he used his motorcycle sound effect once. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm good. Um, yeah, I don't think there is. Huh. That would be the one other thing he could do is just a song about a car. Because that yeah. certainly would have been an era thing to do. Yes. I, I can't even think. There, I'm no. sure there's an analogy somewhere in, in one of the lyrics where a lady is like a car. I'm sure that happened, but I can't. Anyway, the, so the song <laughs> I picked sure. is uh, uh, Careless Talk. And Careless Talk is pretty good as far as like it's got a, it's got the guy with the real deep voice uh, providing uh, background vocals. And mm -hmm. it's not him 
and that works good because he <laughs> that would have been bad. Would have been bad. It, yeah, as in the longest time where it yeah. doesn't quite work. And then uh, there's no. Now I was I double checked myself because I've said this before and then I was wrong. I was like, but there is no change uh, in the song where it becomes an inappropriately different song. There's a right. little slowdown in the middle of this song, but it works. It's still the song. Um, so I think I think as far as that goes, I think the song works. Yeah, it's uh, not quite a bridge, but yeah, there is a little change up, but it doesn't turn into like Italian restaurant Billy Joel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like, oh yeah, this is what this song would do in that era. Yeah. And uh, in looking at the lyrics, what's, so I listened to the song a couple times. I'm sure you did too. Um, I did. It, uh, it has a fade out. It's fine. Um, the lyrics are not great. I don't think. <laughs> They're fine. There, analyzed. Yeah. Uh, You've so been let's, analyzed. Yeah, you done got analyzed, son. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'll start with it. So he says, right. he goes, right away we get into the careless talk. Careless talk, that's what you heard about me. Oh, and, and right away, by the way, there's guys in the background, careless talk, careless. <laughs> They're doing that thing. Talking, talking. Yeah. <laughs> That's Jealous top. Huh? That's what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Text you. Exactly. And it works quite well. Uh, careless talk. That's what you heard about me. Jealous talk. That's oh. what I heard about you. Um, so uh, jealous talk. I, that's what I heard about you. That's a weird one. I don't because what's jealous talk because jealous talk is a, uh, it's a, like a subcategory, I think, of careless talk. Yeah, but isn't jealous talk? If if it, does anybody ever literally jealous talk? Because <laughs> isn't jealous talk is jealousy is what you assume? You know what they're saying? They say but she's stuck up. Yeah, nobody just goes. Oh, I'm jealous of her. Right. They just go. Kendra's a cunt, and you're like, wait, why? Why don't you like Kendra? And it turns out, no, well, she's prettier than you. Yeah. And or she has more money or a better job. Yeah. And the clutchish behavior you hate is she seems happy with herself. You know, like, how, yeah. dare, how dare she? She's confident. <laughs> um, so, I, yeah, he's already made a, a jump. <laughs> yeah. As to why he's heard uh, shit about Kendra or whoever he likes. Yeah, and and I guess he flipped it because he said jealous talk. That's what I heard about you. Everybody's telling lies, and I, if I'm remembering correct, he goes lie eyes. He does lies the right way for this kind of song, yeah, which I like. Uh, I don't even know why. Um, yeah. I think you know why they're jealous. You said they were jealous. <laughs> yeah. Why can't people find something better? to do uh that's a good teenage lament i like that as far as a teenage 50s person's lament of they should just leave us alone right find oh. something better to do yeah like i go do to the like shop. that he in in very typical fashion is already like mad at other people and <laughs> the shit they're doing and uh why can't they do it right like yeah. me yeah it 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 doesn't, there's not a lot of information here. Um, and we, we're not, and well, because, I know he's singing to a girl. Yeah. Right? Singing to a girl, and he's like, hey, you've heard some things about me. Yeah. <laughs> Careless talk. Now, listen, I've heard jealous talk about you. Um, but now it's not about her anymore. <laughs> it's about these other people and what assholes they are. Mm -hmm. Why can't they find something better to do? So maybe, I don't know, if he's hoping to commiserate with this lady about like how they're both being run down yeah. by the other kids at high school or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's not much about the, whatever their relationship is. Yeah, that's true. Their, their relationship isn't much in here. Yeah, it's sort of uh, it's a very specific 
like you said, lament. Yeah, this is a conversation about a conversation he had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and a lot of theorizing about what other people are up to. Yeah. Another favorite. <laughs> uh, All right. Shall, shall I take it? Take it. Careless talk. I don't believe what they say. I heard them talk. They say you've been putting me down. In the shadows on the phone. I like that. Yeah, I do too. They won't leave us alone. They've been talking ever since you came around. Hmm. Listen, if you're friends, uh, it depends on who these people are. If they started talking immediately when, when she showed up, at least hear them out because they might know something. That's because <laughs> yeah. it happens. You shouldn't so just put it out of hand. Yeah. But the thing of this song is like, it's weird because it's not just like, I've been hearing a lot of things about you or you've been hearing about me and they're wrong, baby. It's both things. Yeah. It's like everybody's lying about both of us. So part of me, like I, I wanted to dive into uh, a darker world. I'd be like, oh, he's an actual asshole. And they're talking about that because you would if someone was an actual asshole. Yeah. And as an asshole, he's saying to her, like, well, I've heard shit about you too. Oh. So if they're lying about you, they must be lying about me. Yeah. Which is, you know, on a level he's not working at in this song, but <laughs> fun to consider. Very yeah. sinister. So he's being manipulative, really. Yeah in my uh, fake version of what's going on. <laughs> but yeah, I don't believe what they say. I heard them talk. They say you've been putting me down, which is another era specific yeah. uh, lament. I heard you've been putting me down. <laughs> what am, is it, was it my boyfriend's back or something? There's another, there is a song where- Yeah. Um... My, yeah. Oh, it's my okay. friends were always putting him down, down, down. They said yeah. you come from the wrong side of town. Yeah. What did they mean when they said that you came from the wrong side of town? Uh, leader of the pack. <laughs> leader of the pack. Leader of the pack. Um, Shangri Laws. Yep. Oh, nice the job. Song he played on. Oh my God! Look, look that up. Look, let's see. I think that's the song he played on as a session musician, right? Wow. If that is true, that could very well be true. Then that's, uh, that would be on purpose then. I mean, you'd have to know that you're see? using the same phrase. Because it, because you, it was you, you played on that. <laughs> you were in the studio. Wow. That's pretty great. I'm going to, I think let's just give him the benefit of the doubt. That seems to make sense. <laughs> I'm going to look it up. Wow. Yeah, look it up. And then uh, we got a little bit of a, ch a chorus here. Careless talk telling you I'm doing wrong. Uh-huh. Which I think is sex stuff, like fooling around on her or something. That's got to be what. And then jealous talk. It's probably smooches because it's the 50s. Yeah, it's smooches, fingers at best, but no, probably just smooches. <laughs> Fingers at best. Probably smooches, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, he played piano on one of the demos for Leader of the Pack. Fantastic. Really great. Yeah. Well, uh, a song that also I think has a motorcycle sound effect. From <laughs> yes, it does. It absolutely <laughs> does. <laughs> Man, I wonder if it's the same one because that's. <laughs> it does. I bet there's like one. Yeah. That yeah. just like comes with your uh, soundboard when you buy it. Yeah. Like, and it's the one that you're allowed to use for free. It's that one. Right. Because it's. It. Oh, it's not any specific brand of motorcycle. <laughs> you can use it. Nobody can go, oh, that's an Indian. 
We're suing. <laughs> Careless talk telling you I'm doing wrong. Smooch. Yeah. I'm saying smooches. Yeah. Jealous talk follows wherever you go. Um, you know, this could also be because he keeps you go jealous talk for her. Yeah. It also could be a little bit of a not so subtle, but maybe a reference to uh Christy Brinkley and they're like, yeah, everybody pretty much thinks I I'm way out of my league here. Yeah. Everybody thinks you're way too good for me. Right. I would bet um, they both got sat down more than once, especially her. I'm sure a lot of people sat her down and were like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's five, seven and weird looking and you're a supermodel. What's going on? And they um, sat him down and said, how did you do that? Let me know. <laughs> yes. I would like to do that. Will you teach me to play scales? <laughs> yes. Um, and then, uh, then I'll be, I'll come back next week and we'll do the next thing. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'll bet you're right. I'll bet there was a lot of careless and jealous talk. This is not like, they, her friends didn't let her just do this. Hell no. Like, oh, good for you. And I remember, I'm sure you remember at the time, the media, it made, it didn't make sense to people and people. Oh yeah, thought, there were a lot of articles that were like, how did this ugly man do this? <laughs> <laughs> it was a rough time. I mean, you know, you console yourself with Christy Brinkley, but it must've been tough to hear every day. Like, why are you, hey, uh, the hot lady is dating that little frog man. <laughs> Um, I wonder too, because she seems like, I'm sure she's a perfectly nice person. She has her problems. He has his problems. I wonder if their marriage, one of their, the problems wasn't just imposter syndrome. You know? <laughs> Entirely possible. Because the way I see it, anybody can be in love with anybody. As long as you treat each other well, it doesn't really matter. But if people keep saying crap like that, it's going to bug you. Oh, Yeah. We've been there. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, this one, you know, I've had quite a few relationships at this point. And there are certainly some of them where, like, a lot of people had stuff to say. Yeah. And a lot of them where nobody had anything to say. And they're like, oh, good for you. Uh, but then sometimes uh, people would be like, hey, man, what's up? Why are you going out with that girl? What's up with that? And I'm sure vice versa. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure this came out of some real life stuff. Yeah. Yeah, actually contextualizing like that is actually kind of fun because because then you're like, oh man, if the whole song is just about, hey, look, this can work. I know. <laughs> I, know I know how tall you are. I know what I look like, but you like the songs I wrote. You dated me for some reason. Yeah. Women aren't into looks that much. That's what you guys are always saying. <laughs> right <laughs> I, yeah i've always felt like because i've known they're, they're a very pretty girl that i know who has never dated an attractive man in her life <laughs> and uh, she eventually got married and they have a kid together and the kid's reasonably attractive but he's still weird looking but he's a good dude he's a good guy and i'm like great I, she just likes ugly dudes <laughs> and i've yeah. always yeah thank god yeah thank god for that and by the way this friend of mine the dude plays piano <laughs> it's true um, <laughs> that, it, I don't really, like uh, it helps he's got a good sense of humor too and he's yeah yeah he's got weird <laughs> thick glasses <laughs> but Great. I feel like I know exactly one guy who plays the piano and he's uh, married to Tina Fey. Oh, wow. Well. All right. <laughs> and she is a good six inches taller than he is. Yep. Yep. There's something about the piano that makes you short. <laughs> well, you, well uh, when people see you the first time you're sitting down. Oh, yeah. So maybe it works to your advantage. Yeah. They see you standing up and they're like, oh, shit. Hell no, because so you know, much taller than the last time I saw you. You know, Henry Winkler got the job as the Fonz. He had them let him audition sitting down. 
he, he put a chair down and he did his lines and he's being the Fonz leaning there real cool. So they wouldn't go, uh, do we want the Fonz to be 5-1? <laughs> and it worked. Genius. Yep. Oh, man. So Le leather jackets and pianos, fellas. Learn to play piano. Oh, man. And uh, then make a, an album about the 50s so you can do both. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you've nailed it. <laughs> All right. Nice. You're, you're up. Uh, I'm aware of what you heard. Is that where I am? Yep. I'm aware of what you heard. Every terrible word. <laughs> Everybody's making believe that they know all of the intimate things that we ever might have said. Ever might have. Why? Why is it ever might have? <laughs> we ever. Um, I think he's just keeping it all very theoretical. Yeah. So not saying the things we actually said. They're making it up. They're yeah. saying things we might have said because they don't know. Only you and I know. So don't listen to your friends who don't want you to date me. Yeah, but but is this that Billy Joel thing? Should it be might have ever said? That we ever might have, we might have ever said. I probably just, yeah, probably just more singable this way. Okay. <laughs> just <laughs> just well, blows off the tongue a little easier. Yeah. But I do like, this is dark. Um, up till now, it's been vague yeah. as to what they're talking about. It's like, oh, careless talk. They're putting me down. And now it's like everybody's making believe that they know all of the intimate things that we ever might have said. <laughs> that seems like an exaggeration. I don't think they're doing that. Yeah. Yeah, is it a, unless it's a 50s thing of a very genre, a very era specific thing that people are gossiping about things that would be a problem in the 50s that wouldn't be a problem now. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, like, oh, uh, he's been divorced. Like or stuff like that. He saw her naked once. You know? <laughs> right. They went swimming together. <laughs> yeah um i think it's less about the era and more about the tabloid spotlight they were under probably oh yeah yeah if we keep it keep thinking about it in terms of christy brinkley and our friend billy joel it's a little bit more about all the nonsense he had to deal with which yeah because i think like your friends at the high school aren't making up rumors about the intimate things you might have said to each other yeah. but a tabloid would Yep. It feels more like that. Yeah, some dumb story where part of it, they go, an insider told us that right. crap. Right. A source close to Billy Joel. Did you see, by the way, uh, what's her name? Jane, Jen uh, Biden's... Jen... What's her last name? Who does the press conference? Oh, uh, Jen Psaki. Jen Psaki, uh, where uh, one of the it wasn't on oh, news newsmax lady said some people are saying yes and jen said which people and she said well lots of media people which media people <laughs> <laughs> yes it's such a great technique for un un or disarming that yeah line of questioning well which people well who said it yeah what were their names Oh, you don't? So you're just, okay. Uh, it's a great way to just say like, you're lying without yeah. <laughs> saying it outright. I wish that she would say, well, which people? And then if she'd have just said a name, she just went, uh, Gary? <laughs> Gary? Is that? Gary, Gary a... said it. <laughs> you don't believe me? Ask Gary. I like that because yeah that's i think what he's kind of saying they don't know nothing yeah yeah um oh i stopped in the middle of a thought apparently oh this is the slow part where it uh, builds back up right everybody's making believe that they know all of the intimate things that we ever might have said look there's more in the heat of a passionate moment in a conversation shared 
for the ears of nobody else. There are some things they'll never hear. There are secrets I'll never tell. Yeah, this feels very much like tabloid defensiveness. Yeah, for sure. And maybe a little bit of, um, I like, well, you know, in any relationship, there's that moment when you tell somebody tells you something and you go, yeah, of course, I'm not going to tell anybody this thing. You trusted me enough to share. You're right. And it could easily be that, like, especially if you're uh, somebody like a Christy Brinkley or a Billy Joel, where you're like, hey, here's this terrible true thing about me about whatever about my relationship with my dad about you know right. christy brinkley there's like the one time i ate a whole pizza whatever she says and you're like don't tell anybody about the pizza <laughs> i would never do that you can trust me yeah. with that information and you know like tons of stuff mary joe knows about me that you know i'm All sure right. some of it would get me arrested wow I mean, come on give us one all right. Well, one time. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people are saying. Yeah. That you, uh, you killed that little kid. That's what I was going to say. It wasn't exactly murder. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. You know what? This song might actually be much, even much better than we thought. because, Or at least there's much more going on. If you put it in the context of the man who wrote it at that time in his life that's kind of neat yeah yeah and this was also what 83 that's like around the time that hold on um, one second no, I'll be, yeah no we'll just wait hey ma um i'm here with our friend uh alex base hi mom uh, see you in a bit bye love you cecil all right so that's actually my wife not my mom my mom has passed away but i call mary joe mom clear that up for the listeners at home <laughs> yeah that that uh puts a lot of questions to bed yeah. oh no wait it raises a lot of questions it raises so many more questions because <laughs> uh, uh, that's careless talk it's careless talk if you're watching this podcast don't tell anybody <laughs> um i was uh, saying that like the early 80s, I think, was the height of tabloid invasiveness. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, weren't we either on the cusp of Princess Diana? I mean, it was right around when, when was that? That right was like around... 90. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the 80s was a bad time for tabloids. They were in everybody's grill. Yeah, in fact, if I'm remembering correctly, there's stuff they could do back then that they can't even do now because of laws that have been passed. Right. You know, you yeah. guys are jerks. So here's some stuff you're now not even legally allowed to say right. or do or whatever. Yes. Um, yeah, you do hear a lot less about... I'm trying to decide if it's been absorbed in society and we all just put up with it now or if it kind of... Uh, got quelled I think it got quelled a little bit I think it did um you know we have the if you haven't watched it the Britney Spears documentary um, oh yes very good yeah absolutely it's her the nonsense she had to put up with uh the first just the tabloid part of it then combined with the sexist part of it for a for a perfect cocktail of <laughs> destroying a human being yeah yeah it's no good a real uh yeah it's a nightmare and it's still going on yeah yeah just but i do think you're right that people tolerate a little bit less of it and and people seem to be capable of getting mad at the right person a little more <laughs> we're, we're getting better yeah yeah we're getting sharper yeah although we that stuff tends to just comes right around and you're just like i was a thought i had is, is hey man you hate that uh hate that cancel culture do you me too because i want to see a new fatty arbuckle movie and it's not new none of it's new people have been mean and yeah 
People are terrible. And uh, every once in a while, we decide to pass laws to keep ourselves in check. Yeah. And then we decide we don't like that anymore. And yep. round and round we go. Yeah, we're, we're great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so there are some things that you'll never, secrets I'll never tell. Careless talk, going around on the streets, jealous talk, I know how bad it can be. Isn't it weird that that doesn't rhyme with the other thing? It's fine. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. But it is weird. Yeah, it feels like a song like this, it would rhyme. Yeah, I, th I think I prefer that it doesn't and it kind of just hangs out there. Yeah. It does make you listen to it. When it rhymes, sometimes you don't hear it. True, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you're just like, oh yeah. Because you're you get the satisfaction of the rhyme happening and then you're like okay i don't need to know what he said i just heard the same vowel sound yeah i'm good now let them stand where they fall i like that line let them stand where, stand they, fall. where they fall i don't know if it means anything but i like it yeah i don't know if i feel like it's the other way around but yeah and is it where they fall? Huh. Or I guess it's where they fall metaphorically. Yeah. Well, and again, they don't know us at all. Now he he needed that to rhyme was what it feels like. <laughs> uh all that talking won't make a difference to me. Um, interesting. Let them stand where they fall. Understand where they they fall in a different category. They fall behind us, you know. It's like let them stand where the, where we categorize them. Oh yes, all right, very good. That then, that that makes some kind of sense. Saying, yeah, they fall beside the point. Um, don't take them. Don't take them any more serious. That's their yeah. that's paparazzi. Let them right. stand in they're that not, category. Not really people. So you don't have to care what dumb thing they wrote in People magazine and just that that's where uh, they are. I do like the last line being now I know there's more doo-wop stuff where stuff gets repeated after this. Yeah. But the last line of the actual lyrics is all that talking won't make a difference to me. And it's almost an invitation. <laughs> now you say it too. <laughs> I'm not going to speak for both of us. All that talking won't make a difference to me. Yeah. Christy. Can you let it go? <laughs> can you also please don't listen to them? <laughs> uh, about the thing? Yeah, because up until you read that article, you didn't know I was 5'2". <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny? I like, I, I really enjoy the little, our little journey. In initially the song can seem seem dark and maybe he's being a prick to this fictional person, but if you contextualize it as Billy Joel and Christy Brinkley, this is what that song's about. It's actually quite nice. Yeah. I do like that, you know, you made a 50s album, but it's about stuff you're dealing with. Yeah. It's not just like, oh, I'm just gonna sound like the 50s, man. Yeah, okay. I'm going to use that motif to, uh, you know, still be autobiographical like I always am and to complain about other people's behavior. Right. Like I'm doing every single song <laughs> <laughs> because I'm uh, a curmudge. Yeah. And you know what? It's it is kind of cool because you take the 50s, you take the 50s motif. The whole album does that a little bit where you'll any number of songs are about <laughs> The subject is what you would have talked about then, but it's definitely through the Billy Joel lens. And that is how it should be because you're the artist. Yeah. And that's that's good because then it makes it more than just like a commercial attempt. And Lord knows this couldn't have been a commercial attempt because that's not what you would have done. <laughs> it's not what you would have done, although it worked out. Yeah, of course. But again, that's why Billy Joel is great because he doesn't go, oh, I guess I got to make the like, you know, new wave song. Right. I was like, I'll make a 50s album yeah. in 1983. Do, is there any song you know uh, 
by Billy Joel that you could even categorize as new wave. I don't yeah. think so. New wave? I, God, no. I don't think he got caught up in it. And I like new wave. No worries. No, I'm not saying anything bad. I like the artists who liked to do that, but I'm despise the artists who shouldn't have been doing it. I mean, I think pressure is as close as he got, maybe. Yeah. There was a little Gary Newman vibe in some of it. Yeah, and that's a great song. Yeah, we should talk about that. But it's still like, yeah, there was like new wavy style keyboards, but then immediately he starts singing and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm back on Long Island. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he can't do that. It's great because he can then fuck around with all these other genres, but never end up doing them exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's always going to sound like that, and he's always going to have a piano involved or a keyboard. He like, you know, he tried like Spanish jazz, yeah, in a few songs, but it still is like a Long Island jamoke doing <laughs> Spanish jazz. It doesn't sound quite like Spanish, you know. It's a new yeah. thing. Yeah, it, it's a, a a weird hybrid that uh, you couldn't have planned for. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's yeah. probably a good, I think you've mentioned this before, but it's a good result that comes from how he's more or less the one guy in the studio making the decisions. Yeah. There's not a lot of too much outside influence. Right. He's very centralized. Yeah. You'll see that with bands. They'll get a new producer and then suddenly their next album is a whole different kind of thing. And you realize that, that somebody else was driving it. Yeah. The only thing I ever noticed with him is like late in the career, the last couple of albums, he had a new guitarist and there was a lot of like lead guitar stuff on some of the songs. And I was like, mm, it's, I don't love it. Yeah. But it also didn't kill him because he sounds like that. Yeah. You start singing and you're like, oh yeah. It's still Billy Joel. Yeah. One of the roadies got up there <laughs> singing. God bless him. Yeah, for real, by the way, if just entertain for entertainment's sake, you can just go on to um the Billy Joel fan sites and man, they're people are nuts. <laughs> oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> so I recommend that for anybody if you want to spend an afternoon. Don't so Jeff, don't say anything critical. Oh yeah, they're mad. You and, uh, take your lumps. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. That might be fun. I want some of them to start listening to our show because I have a feeling they're going to be mad at us sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Um, I just was looking up the track list of uh, An Innocent Man because my suspicion is that almost all the songs are about Christy Brinkley. <laughs> And uh, looking at it, it's pretty close. Careless Talk, for sure. Yep. Uptown Girl. Tell her about it. That's like, he just learned that like, oh, if you tell a girl that you like her, it might work out. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's like, I still can't believe my luck. You guys, I figured it out. You got to tell her about it. <laughs> Christy Lee. For sure. Obviously. This Night. Keeping the faith might even work. Um, yeah, this whole album is about her. Except not Easy Money, because he's an Easy Money's on there, right? Yeah, Easy Money uh, was for Rodney Dangerfield, right? <laughs> yes, but yes and no. I think that we we talked about the funny thing was it wasn't written for the movie, but it sure feels like it should have been. It sure worked out because they took that and put it in the movie, and you're like, okay, now this has a home. What is this song? Oh, sorry. I'm, I, I Googled the thing and I saw that uh, An Innocent Man, the single, was released with a Beatles B-side, a song called I'll Cry Instead. Obviously him singing it, but strange. Oh, wow. That is okay. weird. But that is, uh, there's your bygone era, the, the single. I, uh, there's a uh, song, Mary Jo got a Aretha Franklin song, or yeah. it was Soulville was the A side, was the song that she did. 
but the B side was a Broadway cover of If Ever I Would Leave You by Aretha Franklin. Wow. It's one of the prettiest things ever recorded. Huh. Yeah. If ever I would leave you. And it only exists um, because B sides needed, you needed a B side. Needed a B side. And you got some weird stuff. Like you certainly got some Billy Joel songs that weren't on albums. Yep. Um, you got live tracks sometimes. Yeah. And this would be on a 45. Yeah. And then later it was uh, the single. Yeah. The old cassette singles. Talk about fucking landfill. <laughs> landfill management. Right. It's a cassette remember? tape that normally you get 10 songs on it. But this one just has one. Do you remember the albums that were album sized? but would have like three songs. Oh, sure. And the again, EPs? Are they EPs? Maybe those are EPs, yeah. I think so. And the only ones I ever thought were worth a damn were Prince put out some of those that were just the song. Instead of the song you got on the album, you got the insane version he would have preferred to give you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. The uh, crazy director's cut. Yeah, where there was seven minutes after the last word of, it's not jazz. I know it's not jazz because that's not right. what jazz sounds like. But, well, you know. Sex screams. Yeah, oh, God, yes. And, uh, yeah, the guitar and, uh, yeah. He was on, he was the musical guest on SNL when I was there once. And uh, his first song was like nine minutes. And it was really three songs and, <laughs> and nobody was mad. Yep. Why would you be mad? Yeah, it's fucking Prince. Yeah. Prince. Just let him do the whole hour and a half. Yeah, there is no, yeah. If if he wanted to do that, would anybody go, oh, but I had this sketch about a funny waiter. Oh. My, my update jokes. <laughs> oh. I got to really know Prince. what's up with that. <laughs> hey now that one i love that every time but i'd rather watch prince i'd rather watch prince than almost anything <laughs> i so watched I was... uh, his performance of uh while my guitar gently weeps mm. yet again yeah it's unreal yeah the guy who was uh shooting who was the director of that special uh released a director's cut that like heavily features <laughs> prints all the way through. It's really great. That's great. You're, uh, you appear to be on a private jet. I am. Hmm. This is a very like nice a big shot. Oh, I solved it. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, are you flying over Scandinavian skies? Ah, maybe. I don't know, but I will tell you that uh, I I. I set up, this is the, this jet I got for myself. I, oh, I, it's your own private plane. Yeah, I got, I, you know. Your personal. I, I, I think I rented it, I think. Yeah, <laughs> but you don't say rent it, of course. No, you would charter, you charter a plane. Yep, that's what I did, that's right. Yeah, you chartered a jet. Oh. Yeah, I chartered this specific. Oh, and you chart, is it like a G5 or a? A Gulf Stream, or a I I think you'd say it's a brand or a or a yeah the name chartered. A... It is a very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very chartered nice. A luxury kind of, kind of jet. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I getting nowhere? Chartered a plane. Yeah, so, yeah, I did charter this cool jet. <laughs> I, I'm blank. Why am oh. I blank? And just just so you know, by the way, what I ordered, which I think is chicken, that won't help you. But just so you know, you don't need to worry too much about what I got to eat. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I chartered a jet. What kind of jet did I charter? A uh, private one. 
Well, yeah, I'm sure it's a private jet, but what kind of jet is it? Like a, a Boeing? <laughs> no. No, you chartered a Gulfstream. You chartered a, G, a Learjet. It is a Learjet. Yeah, I chartered a Learjet. Wow, I'm blank. I got nothing on this one, bud. Yeah, I, you, well, you've got the phrase, I chartered a Learjet. Chartered a Learjet. And you know what? In fact, I might as well just give you this. I charted a Lear. The word jet doesn't appear. <laughs> I chartered a Lear. Wow. And, I, and now if somebody, um, if somebody did do that, if somebody like myself, for example, or another person, maybe a different gender, did the same thing, um, you, how would you describe the act of chartering a Lear? Oh, that's uh, decadent. It is decadent. Is it? it what? It's a decadent what? Uh, the uh, an extravagance. It's ex it's an extravagance. It's um, um, you know, and you could describe that person. Okay, I'm, I'm, it's starting to take shape. Yeah, and you could describe that person according to other things they do that are consistent that create their own <laughs> creates her own kind of style. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not her style. That's right. <laughs> that's right. She wines and dines with Argentines. That's right. Two ladies. <laughs> you got favorite. it. You, you said it, right? You know yeah. you said it, right? That's, that's not, not her style. style. Nice job. I can't remember. I still don't know the lines that go around. She charted a Lear. And neither do I right now because I'm not looking at him because it's not like a song you hear a lot. Well, now we got to look. That's not her style lyrics. <laughs> um, I only ever remember she wines and dines with Argentines and Kuwaitis. Yeah. It's very funny to me. <laughs> she charted a Lear when she heard her career was in danger and gave the pilot something extra for a perfect ride. That song rules. Yeah. And also he's very much pretending to be Mick Jagger in that song. And I think I picked a good dinner, right? The chicken yeah, looks yeah. good. Chicken? I think it looks like chicken to me. Yeah, oh, back there? Yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe salmon, I don't know. I was thinking salmon at first, but it looks a little more. The grill marks make me think it's chicken. Oh yeah, and a little uh, little white wine you're having. It's little great. vino, little vino. That looks yeah. like the kind of wine that's a little too sweet for me, though. If you look at the color. Oh, it's like a riesling. It might be a riesling, yeah. Or, or a Gewurztraminer. Gewurztraminer. Hopefully not a Moscato. Oof. Yeah, that's my mom's favorite. Happy oh. Mother's Day, mom. Happy Mother's Day, mom. <laughs> and to all the moms out there, I hope somebody charters a Lear. Yeah. Takes you out. You <laughs> dumb moms. Dine with Kuwaitis. <laughs> uh, all right, you got some trivia for me, son? Uh, yeah, dog. <laughs> Might be pretty easy. Uh, what is Billy Joel's birthday? Uh, March 3rd. No. Oh. That was a guess, clearly. 364 guesses to go. <laughs> Why would I ask you that trivia question today? Oh, is it today? Today's Billy Joel's birthday. Oh, it's happy May birthday. May 9th, 1949. Happy birthday, Billy Joel. Happy birthday, Billy Joel. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Now, I'm a, I'm a Billy Joel fan, I did not know his birthday, to my, in my defense, this will be the first year I remember my sister's birthday on the right day. Oh, great. I'm bad at it, <laughs> and, and I feel bad about it, so. Are you I, on the Facebook, which always helps with that? Yes, um, I sort of feel like that's cheating, but also yeah, the problem with- the, sure is. But the problem with the Facebook one is that be, with Facebook, you'll find out it's their birthday right on their birthday. 
Yeah, that's true. There's no warning. And what I want to do is be like preemptively be able to go, oh, I believe it's your birthday Wednesday. And yeah, well, yeah. yeah, it is. And then I can <laughs> call her and be a decent brother. Yeah. Because uh, my sisters, um, so, you know, I'll complain about my parents forever. As long as anyone will listen, I'll complain about my parents. But <laughs> my siblings are tremendous human beings. Um, right. You know how you have, you'll always have like a brother or sister that can be a little inconsiderate or whatever. Yes. That's me. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're the one. I'm the one. So I'm trying to so do better. Everything else is great. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to be better for them this year. And I think they found, and the last couple of years, I've tried to be better just remembering stuff. And I think they've been consistently surprised. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm taking a picture of you to send to Sue and say, this is what I'm doing right now. Ah. It's like, what are you doing right now? This. <laughs> That's <laughs> fantastic. Um, yeah. So I selected a song for next week. That's a good idea. That's what we do. That's what we do. Here's how this happened. Um, I listened to Careless Talk in preparation. And I was like, oh, I had never listened to it. There are certain songs that you obviously hear a lot on the radio and that you listen to for your own enjoyment. And then there are songs that just fall through the cracks and you forgot they existed. And then you listen to them and you're like, oh, this is a fine song, which is what happened to me today when I heard Careless Talk. So I was looking through the tracks and I saw that there's a song uh, on Nylon Curtain called Surprises. Oh. And I thought, uh, what the fuck is that? And then I listened to it. And um, I don't know what it's about, but I think it's got a lot of good, juicy, uh, lines and uh, we might be able to figure it out well that's fantastic um and then uh, i'll i'll share this bit of trivia it's not really trivia it's just the thing i'm gonna say but i had the same thing happen i'm listening to careless talk and then i i do the game where i try to figure out what the picture is going to be and sometimes it's going to be an easy one and originally the it was going to be really easy but i couldn't get the picture so then i was like i did this one which was less easy but then I yeah. look at her different lyrics and there was some song I looked at his, can't even remember the name of it, that had like nine lines of lyrics, period. And I was like, wow, I'm pretty sure we're never picking this song. Yeah, yeah. It's the, and I'm pretty, it's gotta be bad. I gotta listen to it because I'm curious. Oh, I have to, uh, Sue says, call me, which she never says. Oh, okay, let's shut this down. Let's shut this down. I got to call her and see what's going on.